Jackson Hole being the second biggest event of the week remains a wild card. He can't score it. We don't we don't know. We just don't know what he's going to say. And we more importantly don't know what the reaction in the bond market is going to be which is going to drive the action in stocks. You just got to believe that to be true. Yeah. So I, I think the, the, the risk is that uh, Powell goes too far. I've been saying this really since like uh, March or April. Uh, and, I, and I'm not and I'm not uh, I have nothing has happened that that will change my mind. And, you know, there, there are two types of people get in the shower, uh, people that get in the temperature. It's like close enough to OK. And they just stay in there long enough and let it, you know, get accustomed to it. And then there are people who have to twiddle the knob every two seconds and they never stop adjusting it. And that's Powell. And he did it in 2018. We all watched him hike, hike, hike. Oh, wait. Oops. Cut, cut, cut. Uh, this is probably what's going to happen this time. They'll probably sneak in another one. They're not really sneaking it in. They want everyone to know that they're capable of doing it. I wouldn't call that sneaking. Uh, whatever the last hike is going to be, it's definitely going to be the one that was too many. And honestly, the whole thing is incoherent to me. You keep saying, uh, they keep saying that Fed monetary policy operates on a lag, but just in case, let's do a few more rate cuts. If it operates on a lag, then by definition, shouldn't we be going slower? Shouldn't we stop too early uh, rather than too late? But they don't seem to care about what their own words are, and they're probably going to do too much. And I think that's what the market feels like right now. Well, uh, the KRE was pointed out. But yeah. you could see that everywhere. Maybe they're hoping that, Josh, their words can do the action that their actions don't have to do. You know what I'm saying? Like they can they could talk tough enough yields do a little bit of work for the Fed, which I yeah. think we can say is, they is the they case. Tried that. They tried that. back up. We'll just have to see whether they actually they do go too far with their actions. They tried that in the second half of 2022, and it didn't work. And that's how we ended up with three consecutive 75 basis point rate hikes, unprecedented in the modern era, because that didn't work. So, I, look, I don't think that we're at the point where anything materially changes based on a speech. You'll see market reaction, but they had to do the hikes. So, the, so we're not debating whether or not all the hiking was necessary. What we're debating is when is it too much? Um, and, and I don't think pricing and cuts is the thing. Look, the VIX yesterday was was extra, extraordinarily low. It changes quickly overnight. But like this is still a relatively complacent market. Some of the bank stocks, you know, putting those aside um, today is a different story. Fifty four percent of the S&P 500 is on the decline today. Eighty seven percent of the XLK, which is your your tech stocks, let's call that risk appetite writ large. Ninety six percent of the semiconductors are declining today with NVIDIA putting up perhaps the second best quarter in the history of any semiconductor company ever. Um, so there is there are definitely people quickly de-risking on this potential uh, event where Powell tries to use more fire and broomstone at, at the pulpit. Mm -hmm. But in the end, uh, I, in the end, if we know this stuff operates on a lag, then it's possible a lot of damage, the seeds of a lot of damage have already been planted and it's maybe too late to stop it. Well, That's what I'm wor I'm not worried about the next hike. I'm worried about what happens when we catch up with the last 20 hikes. Yeah, it's been on, you know, it's been unprecedented, really, the speed of what the Fed has done uh, just over 12 months time, really. Now, let's turn our attention back to NVIDIA. And before I, I get Josh's commentary on it, which I, I know everybody wants to hear, I want to get to Jim because you've been sort of flirting with NVIDIA for a while. And then on Ooh. Tuesday, on Tuesday, and then the week, we're going to have a good argument about this. Um, <laughs> on Tuesday, you bought it. Yeah. You bought it before the print. Yes. Why? Um, because I'm going to build this position over time. First off, I think you know, I mean, you've heard me say for the last two weeks, I got to get in, I got to get a toehold before earnings, all right? I had no idea if earnings were going to be this good, and I had no idea how the stock would respond. So it wasn't a call on earnings. It was simply I have to participate before earnings. Look, I, I will admit I held my nose on valuation when I pulled the trigger. I'm not having such a hard time today after what I saw last night. Um, this is a case where, you know, the, the real world is, is showing us 
us that uh, NVIDIA has earnings power, demand for its chips that really there is no definition for. There appears to be no limit for. Uh, the demand is such that they can probably name any price that they want for these chips. Now, I can talk about valuation all I want, but this is a stock that's going higher. I don't care if it gives up today's gains. Today has no relevancy to the long-term prognosis for this stock. I, however, have a specific problem. Some people have it as well, that I wasn't in the stock, so how do I enter it? And it's a technique. You buy a little bit now. I'll see what happens over the next couple of days, but 1%, my position size now, is likely to be 4% over the next six months or so. I've just got to pick my spots and chip away at it. If you're listening to me and you're in the same boat, just patiently find your spots to build the position. But you have to own this stock.